Well, you'd have to say we're in the middle of Australia. I don't know where the dead centre exactly is, but there's the rock and there's the algas. Deep in the farming belt of Western Australia. <laughs> Good job, mate. Good job. <laughs> heavy haulage expert Yogi is getting set for a mammoth cross-continental journey. We're going east. <laughs> if I go west, we'll end up in the water. I'm not going north, it's too hot. South is too cold, so we'll be going east. Yeah, that's an eastbound run for us. Accompanied by his beloved truck PJ, the 37-year-old has a massive trip ahead. From his home in Katanning, Yogi's heading for the town of Wangaratta, near Melbourne in Victoria. A lazy 3,300 kilometre trip. That's enough distance to cross the Atlantic Ocean. On board PJ are four tonnes of farming equipment, worth more than $35,000. They're needed on the other side of the country in just four days' time. But last time he set out on this voyage, Yogi sailed into stormy waters. Just months ago on the same run, mechanical troubles forced Yogi to abandon PJ. A complete engine rebuild for the 19-year-old truck cost $30,000 and precious time off the road. Right, mate. We'll uh, be in touch. We'll see you again. <laughs> Thanks, mate. To help right, make mate. up the lost cash, Yogi's decided to risk taking PJ on the same run. The mammoth trip is guaranteed to give the old girl another gruelling workout. It sucks, but yeah, got to do it. Next morning, it's a 6 a.m. start. Yep. Yep. More K's, more day. The Nullarbor Plain, or paddock as it's known by truckers, is a huge expanse of outback wilderness. It's twice the size of Portugal, but home to barely a handful of tiny settlements. Out here, Temperatures can reach 50 degrees. Break down and help can be days away. Before he can put a wheel on the nullarbor, Yogi must fill up and check that PJ's ready for the challenge. 1986 kilometres to Adelaide town. To me, this is the start of the trip, I reckon. This could happen. <laughs> this is where things could go bad. Now, with every kilometre, Yogi's getting further and further from home. Yogi's woken to serious news. What? A truck has crashed 100 kilometres ahead. Andrews has told me that the highway's blocked at Nullarbor, so... There's only one road through this barren wilderness. If the crash has closed it, Yogi will be stuck there, risking the deadline on a vital job. He has no choice but to carry on. You've got to keep pushing it all day. It's a hard job. The pressure's building on Yogi. Adding to his stress, he's also trying to lock down a load for his return journey. But in the outback, even the basics aren't guaranteed. Why can we not live in the 21st century? And like, why can we not have phone range? After trying to pick up a signal all morning to check in with a customer, finally... Oh, hello, buddy. How are you, mate? How are you? Hey, mate, that big trailer's still sitting there. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're right. Yeah, OK. See you, mate. His return load's been cancelled. I'm oh, back to nothing again. If he can't find a replacement to cover his fuel costs, Yogi will be thousands of dollars out of pocket. I want to lock something in by tomorrow. It's turning into a nightmare trip. But then, a radio call suddenly puts all Yogi's troubles into perspective. Oh, no. Yeah, right. 
lights. It's the crash he heard about this morning. It was fatal. Unfortunately, uh, the caravan done a U-turn in front of the truck, not realising there's a loaded road train behind him, and, uh, you know, you're not going to pull up 84 tonne of road train. By the time Yogi reaches the scene, the road is clear, and the truck involved is being towed away. But just ahead, there's still a sign of where the caravan owner lost their life. Not cool. Fatality out here. That's a horrible way to go. Caravans can often be a hazard on narrow, remote outback roads. Yogi knows at first hand how dangerous they can be. It's happened to me once. It just went straight across in front of me. And I had nowhere to go. I just, I don't know how I miss the back of their caravan. It still sends shivers down my spine this day, and that would have happened maybe 12 years ago. And that's exactly what happened there last night. A radio call has Yogi on alert. A massive oversized truck is coming his way. He needs to give the bigger truck a wide berth. Heavy load, they called us to sit on the edge of the black, that's fine. It's a routine manoeuvre. Slow down, move over, keep going. But then up ahead... A caravan suddenly pulls up off the highway. Yogi's 25-tonne rig can't just stop on a dime. It's a dangerous situation. Yogi's committed. He must keep moving. But if the caravan pulls back out, Yogi's got nowhere to go. If they're pulled over, have they seen what's behind? Have they looked? If they might, they might not have looked. So if I go past and they come out, they're going to run straight into me without looking. After what we've seen out there in the Nullarbor the other day, you just don't know. People are a little bit unpredictable. It was bad, but it was, you know, the end result was a good result. With the Nullarbor behind him, Yogi can push into South Australia. So far, PJ's taken the trip in her stride. But just ahead is a painful landmark. The garage where Yogi had to abandon his beloved truck with major mechanical troubles. As he crosses the border into Victoria, this delivery's almost done. And Yogi's ready for the next one, no matter what the load may be. The only thing I haven't delivered is a baby. And I have a red-hot crack at that. <laughs> Veteran trucker Steve Graham has been called in to clean up a mess. He'll be hauling away the cars and trucks of people who took on Australia's harshest outback roads and lost. I just don't want to know what happened sometimes to trucks like that. I can imagine. When I look at that cab, I have to think the worst. So I don't really want to think about it. It's just a sad state of affairs all around. Having travelled the outback for over 40 years, for Steve, these wrecks are all harsh reminders of the dangers he faces every day. You know, when you crash trucks and crash cars, it does enter your mind that someone could have come badly to grief there. And, you know, it makes me sad to think about that. Steve will be towing a three-trailer road train with a mixed load from Alice Springs to Perth, two and a half thousand kilometres away. Much of the journey's on dirt roads that are often remote and always treacherous. In all honesty, I think if you haven't been in the game for a long time, you don't want to pull loads on like this. Ahead is a gruelling and uncertain journey with his faithful companion, Bella. And someone wants a bit of a cool down. At the end of it all, Steve's assembled a monster of a rig. We would like to do it in 72 hours, but with this load and with the conditions and everything, it's uh, four days. When you're pulling a load like this one across that road, you've got to be careful. It's got even an outback veteran like Steve worried. You know, it's not the sort of load to throw onto a mongrel road like the Chukaruru road. 
and necessarily expect to come out the other end. You can't get too tired, you can't let yourself get tired, you can't wander around and you can't stop checking. You've got to keep checking everything all the time. You get one loose strap or one loose chain and you've got cars up on top of trailers, things like that, then you've got real problems. As soon as it's loose, fix it. Steve makes another unscheduled stop. Righto, I'll have a look at this load. I don't see any problems with it in the mirrors, but it pays to check. Nail it all down. Come on, dog, come for a run. Yeah, you'd hate to have a toolbox come open, you'd lose... Hello? Shit, what's going on here? It's a new backup fuel tank full of emergency diesel. I've got a leak out of my fuel pod. What are we going to do here? Shit's made a mess over here. I just put 800 litres of fuel in this pod and hate losing diesel. If I get the filler hose and put on that and clamp it off and put the hose back into it, I'll save it. What I'm going to do, attach this and tie it off up the top and then the fuel can't escape. It can't get above its own height. That's good. That could have been a major drama, but now the fuel, all the fuel can do is go in the pipe and the furthest it can go is to its own height there. Back on the road, Steve's a temporary tourist as he cruises past Uluru. Well, you'd have to say we're in the middle of Australia. I don't know where the dead centre exactly is, but there's the rock and there's the algas. So that's pretty well the middle for me. But the safety of the bitumen is about to end. We're getting on the dirt now. From here on, the road is red and rough. It'll take all of Steve's experience to keep his truck and his giant load the right way up. On this section, a grade is working. Closing the main track. It's totally unpredictable what happens next. Traffic's diverted through narrow detours. If it's anything like normal, there'll be some sort of a challenge thrown at us out here. No good for a road train the size of Steve's. Trevor the grader driver, do you copy? He needs a helping hand. Right, mate, so I can sneak up on the formation at the start of it. Steve's in luck. The formation is the wider, freshly graded section. Well, that's good news. That's really good news. This is why I asked if I could get up on the formation. These detours around these new culverts are very tight for a triple. He has a whole new road to himself. Thank you, mate. Much appreciated. It's a bit of good old outback good manners going on here. People helping each other. It's a damn good thing. And uh, now it's pretty cruisy. But I don't want to get too excited because there's another 1,100 kilometres to go and let's see what can happen. He doesn't have to wait too long. Yeah, and uh, why, uh, why do I make these big, sweeping, stupid statements? You'd think at my age I would have learned. Within two seconds of being so happy with the road, it's kind of absolute corrugated crap. I can't believe it. Story of my life. Mongrel Mad Max load better hang on back there. It's rough. And it's going to get rougher. What I'm hearing is the West Australian side's terrible. It was pretty rough when I come across here seven weeks ago. Now, if it's had seven weeks of traffic on it, it could be really, really bad. We'll see. It's out back trucking. You've got to take what you get. If ever you're going to have trouble with a load, it's this sort of mongrel, Mad Max, chain-grabbing, strap-breaking sort of a load. All I know is I've got a 1,000 kilometres of dirt. Could all be like this. Blake said to me a while ago, I suppose you get used to corrugations after a while, and he came that close to me throwing him out that door. It wasn't funny. You never get used to corrugations, and you never get to like them. Steve has no choice but to stay on the corrugation. The deep, sandy sides are even more of a hazard. I just heard two blokes talking about a truck that's bogged on the side of the road, so I'll just back off a bit in case anyone wants to wave me down.
A few kilometres later, the deserted truck. Oh, yeah, he's jumped up on the windrow. Well, that looks like the bitumen to me. Uh, I'll be glad to get on it, I think. Finally, the road improves and welcome signs of civilization. And then, unwelcome ones. Still, roadworks is part of the deal, isn't it? You can't have roads without roadworks. Time to stop and take stock of the wear and tear of the last 1,000 kilometres of dirt. This is where I've got to pump up my stair tyres put them back up as hard as I can get them. And uh, then I'll go around and I'll knock this dust out of these wheels, check my load, and we'll keep on going. I'm back in civilization here. He's also back in phone range, the end of the solitude he enjoys on these big outback runs. As soon as I got in phone range, the, uh, the phone went mad. I've got people with messages about this people waiting for this. It's uh, the usual story. I'm going to have to start ringing a few people and telling them they won't be seeing their freight tomorrow. They'll be seeing it the day after. He's on the homeward leg, three hours out of Perth. But at 53 metres long, he can't enter the city limits. The maximum length a road train can be from here on is 36 and a half metres. So I've got to drop the back 20 metres off, which is the back trailer and dolly. To stay legal, Steve will offload his back trailer. It's because of roadside furniture, roundabouts, people in cars, it's, it is what it is. So that third trailer stays here, gets towed in by a contractor, I go in with these two. By nightfall, Steve's on the outskirts of Perth. His 2,800 kilometre trek is almost over. So what I'm doing is take this trailer home now, come back and get that one, and tomorrow we start to unload it. Tomorrow this poor old truck gets to its final destination and uh, things get unloaded. Next morning, the final delivery. We've got to keep on cracking on. We've got to unload this load. The crashed truck he's had on the back all the way, reminding him of the dangers of trucking life. And, of course, every time I look in the, in the mirror, and I see the tanker, it disconcerts me. I hate looking at the thing in the mirror. I look in the mirror and I, and I get a sudden sense of, oh my God, am I going over? It's really, it's unreal, it's not good. It's the end of the road for this written off victim of the outback. Good to go, Travis. And the end of another epic journey for Steve Graham. After weeks away, Steve's back home. Thanks, Travis. She's all yours, mate. No, Finally you time to stop being the trucker and be the family man. Get some gear serviced and go and see the grandkids. I've got six little grandkids that need me to go and say good day to them. And I've got some presents to dish out. I'll go and buy some love. Heavy machinery trucker Paul Mackay has a rough day ahead. Welcome to the dirt. <laughs> taking on the Peninsula Development Road in Cape York, cutting through the largest wilderness in northern Australia. It's a 600-kilometre patchwork of scorching bitumen and savage dirt track. Glenn Scott needs to move his work crew and over a million dollars worth of machinery before they get stranded. We've already had a couple of big storms, so just get everything out before you do get caught in here. Paul's drawn the short straw with his load. So if he just makes it home, it don't fall apart. This accommodation block is flimsy. Got to be patient with it. Otherwise you'll break something. And at 10 tons, very heavy. Oh, I load it up with all the camp stuff and all that. He needs to drag it onto his trailer. Right? Nah, you're not moving that bar. So you get caught on the lip down there. In here, just on the lip where it's got to come back up onto, onto the slide. With the rest of the convoy almost ready to move off, Paul 
needs to hurry to get this on. All good, mate. Let's see how we go now. Ten men, four trucks, three pilot vehicles, and one scraper. This convoy is ready to make some dust. 150 brutal kilometers are still left to drive. Taking them on in the pitch black is asking for trouble. Big push to try and get this gear unloaded as quick as we can. Ahead, there's a mountain range to climb. But first, a series of dry riverbeds to cross. We've got a bit of a zigzag to into a river crossing, so we've got a big possibility of getting bogged in. I would get three around there. Paul's worried the climb out of the river is too steep and too narrow for his three trailers. Yeah, I ain't gonna do one at a time because uh, yeah, it's just too tight. He decides to take them up one by one. A couple of big bumps right here, and then we've got to get out wide there to get ourselves around. Put the Safely up. But now Paul's boss Glenn is coming. And he's risking it with two trailers. It's convoy chaos for Paul Mackay. In fading daylight, his boss's truck is stuck on a hill. He needs Paul's help to pull him out. I'll back down to him. Paul's pulled his weight. But the delay has put the whole convoy under pressure. Let's go, mate. Let's go. Nightfall is only an hour away. On these roads with a two kilometre long convoy, darkness is dangerous. And now up ahead, the northern reaches of the Great Dividing Range. You can see the mountains up there. Paul has to drag his three trailers and 100 tonnes up and over it. Right, I'm trying to get a little bit of a run on. have a bad connection on your lights there, do they? Flicker on and off. Yeah, you know what's less my problems at the moment. Bad, mate. Come on, girl. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up, 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 Paul's four truck convoy was rushing to conquer this road in the daylight. But this dry bog has put pay to that. The last leg of this challenging journey will now be done in the dark. Starting with a dangerous descent. It's where a lot of guys come undone. They try and change gears where they're going down a big range and truck takes off and 
That sits his eye over. Have to go right over to the right there, Paulie. That's his shear drop down that way. Paul has 100 tonnes of freight pushing him down the hill. Miss a gear and he could have a runaway truck. Well, I put it in one gear and that's it. That's where she stays. Go too heavy on his brakes and he'll burn them out. Be careful. Thanks, mate. We can uh, start letting it go. Mate. All good, poorly. Feed of the fat, mate. Finally. He's on the home strut. Made it. Yeah, well, we got here one piece, it's amazing. <laughs> Paul's shattered, but it's a job well done. Back it. Probably gonna need a beer after that. Good job. Yes. Good job. Yes. Good job. Yes. Good job. 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 Good job